All right, welcome back in. So glad you can join us on a Thursday morning here on Woodward Sports. Uh, this guy, I don't want to make him blush and, and make him turn the color of his shirt. A uh, tremendous linebacker for the Michigan Wolverines. He was captain of the 1980 Michigan Wolverine football team, a team that was, I remember, Andy, you guys were awesome. It built to a crescendo in the way your defense played to end that season. Uh, I, I remember that very well. And, of course, you ended the season the best way you could at the time. You gave Bo his first Rose Bowl <coughs> championship. The linebacker, the captain of that 1980 Michigan football team, Andy Canavino, kindly joining us, uh, Sean Belegian and Terry Foster. First of all, Andy, really appreciate you taking the time this morning. How are you, sir? I'm fine. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Andy, um, What what's going on in your mind with everything that's been in the news the, the last couple of weeks i know how much Bo meant to your to to you guys to all of you guys you you guys were a family i i always like to hear both sides to a story not to diminish one but but ask around and say hey did you hear these things what what's going on so we thought we'd ask you andy and appreciate you taking the time what what's your perspective on everything that's been going on well first of all i gotta say uh Two things uh, unrelated to that, but I'll get to that in a second. Uh, Bo calls me his greatest captain ever, which is a great honor. Not his greatest player, but his greatest captain, and, and I appreciate that. Second thing is you write about the 1980 team. Uh, we started out one and two, had a great finish. Believe it or not, Bo had lost his last 11 games. Uh, he, uh, he lost his last game 11 straight years. Mm. And then we finally he either lost to Ohio State or in the bowl. So we finally won a bowl for a uh, uh, bow and uh, very proud of that accomplishment. Yeah, it was phenomenal. The way your defense, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you had all the shutouts, then then you, you held Ohio State to a field goal. McCartney's Monsters, right? Wasn't that the nickname being thrown around back then? Yes, that was. And Bill McCartney, probably the greatest coach I ever had, uh, besides Bo Schembechler. Uh, I think we went 24, our last 24 quarters without giving up a touchdown, which is a pretty amazing fact. No doubt about that. Uh, Andy, what's your perspective on this? Because I'm sure you know some of these guys that have come out and, and made some of these comments. And, uh, you know, I, I can tell the, the high esteem that you hold, uh, Bo. Uh, what did you see? What, what's your take on everything going on right now in Ann Arbor? Well, first of all, let me say something. Uh, you know, I, I, the, the people, including myself, that were sexually assaulted, you know, I have, I have uh, empathy and sympathy for them. Uh, the problem is, uh, you know, that was Dr. Anderson. It wasn't Bo Schembechler. What, what I remember, um, we got physicals. He, he uh, gave us rectal exams, which, of course, looking back, giving 17, 18, 19-year-old, 20-year-old kids rectal exams was not the proper thing to do. But the thing about Dr. Anderson and, and about the time back then was he did it to every person, whether you, uh, you know, there was 110 kids on the team and he gave rectal exams to every one of us. Now to other people, he might've done more, which uh, I, I know about, but the thing about Bo Schembechler, knowing or not knowing, is that we all used to joke about it. We called him Dr. Finger. We talked about it. We laughed about it. Oh my gosh, we got to go see Dr. Anderson, get a physical. Uh, did Bo's kid tell Bo, um, he stuck his finger, uh, he gave me a rectal exam. He might have, but in 1969, when he might have told him, Bo, like myself or my father, might have said, hey, it sounds like that's part of the program. Apparently, that's part of the physical. So did Bo know? Yes. Did he know it was sexual assault? Of course not. That's my opinion. Um, there's no way that Bo... You have to understand, you know Bo Schembechler just like his mentor, Woody Hayes. When there is a problem, he took care of it immediately. Sometimes it wasn't a great idea to do that. He might have maybe looked into the facts a little bit more. But he took care of problems immediately, and if he thought there was anything going on that was either illegal or sexual in nature, he would have went nuts. So there's no way... If he didn't know anything that he thought it was sexual assault or any, or even thought that it was wrong, you know, one of my now let me say one other thing about the two. Let me say one other thing about the two accusers. I went to school with Dan Kudakowski. I like Dan. He's a friend of mine. Dan got kicked off the team for drug use. Now, sadly, and I'm being honest here, he should have never got kicked off the team. 
Okay, there's a whole story about that that I'm not going to get into. So he is bitter. I don't blame him. Bo's son, who I talked to 30 years ago, hates his father for whatever reason, sued his father. I'm not saying that they weren't sexually assaulted. I'm not saying things didn't happen. But as far as them telling Bo and Bo doing nothing or thinking that it was okay, that, that, that's just impossible. Well, is it possible that Bo, you know, he used to put the moniker on all, everybody in the program, was a Michigan man. Was it, could Bo have known and have been told, but thinking a Michigan man is not going to sexually assault another Michigan man, um, that it was, this was part of the exam. Is that possible? Yes, uh, that could be possible because, to be honest with you, we, we didn't whisper about it. We talked about it. We laughed about it. We joked about it in a way. Um, so, yes, Bo might have known that um, the, the Dr. Anderson is giving rectal exams to the football team. But I'm sure he thought that was part of a physical. Um, looking back, it is sexual assault. It's considered sexual assault. And I believe it's sexual assault. But did Bo know that? No. There's no way it's impossible. There's one accusation that someone told Bo when he told him to go see Don Canham. That might have happened. But I don't know for sure. Andy, I... I can't even imagine what's this like because, you know, I, I, I grew up in a generation where, you know, again, we much like you guys, I, that, this is where I relate to it. You almost made a joke out of it that, that it, it started, you use the term Dr. Finger and everything. Was there a realization for you while you were at Michigan or did your realization happen later in life where you sat back and said, man, this is wrong. This is just flat out wrong. Did you have that moment? Well, the funny thing is, I actually have prostate problems now, and, and I've had it for a couple of years. And when I went to the doctor, he said, you know, at age 40, you should start getting your prostate checked every, you know, year, every two years, couple of years. And I, I started thinking back, I go, wow, Dr. Anderson used to do that, you know, when we were younger. I still didn't think anything about it. Mm. Um, I will say this about Dr. Anderson. I'll give you one example where, um, where I believe that he did a sexual assault students. I went in there one time for a, a strep throat. I used to get strep throat a lot back then for some reason. And Dr. Anderson said, pull your pants down. He cupped my testicles and told me to cough. Okay, Every, he gave me medicine, everything's fine. Looking back at the time, I didn't know that that was wrong. I'm a 19 year old kid. He, tell, he cups your testicles, tells you to cough. You think it's normal, he's a doctor. You have to respect that he's a doctor. Looking back, of course, I know now that it was wrong. At the time, I didn't think anything of it. Mm. Unbelievable. Andy Canavino kindly joining us here on uh, Woodward Sports. Terry Foster, Sean Belegian in there. I is this something, Andy, have, have, have you guys gotten together? I know you have various reunions in the past and i actually ran into you at a reunion one year you had, would have no reason to remember that i remember that because i was like i remember this guy he was such a good linebacker but you were you're very kind by the way is this something that you guys are coming to groups with as a group now i mean you're, you're talking about 40 years have passed now and what was once a joke you guys are looking at each other now as fathers and grandfathers and going whoa this is wrong has there been a lot of talk amongst you former teammates say this and, and you said it right 40 years ago why didn't this come up 20 years ago 30 years ago 10 years ago 40 years ago it, it started i mean 40 years ago so my point is i would think 95 98 percent of the people didn't think it was sexual assault at the time now you know as you look back i heard anytime someone sticks a finger in your in rectum is considered sexual assault. So now, 40 years later, we're reviewing this. But as far as dragging Bo Schembechler into this, it's a terrible idea and it's not right. The other thing is, yes, there's petitions going around um, for the athletes to sign, to stick up for Bo. The problem with that is a lot of the athletes are afraid to sign it because there's litigation going on and they don't want to ruin the litigation. Mm. Well, I, I can tell you for a fact that back then it, it it wasn't considered sexual assault. I mean, today is different than 69, 79, or 89. We had a different mentality back there. And um, if, if you told someone that 
you got a rectal exam back then, they're like, okay, cool. Mm. Yeah, I mean, think about it. 110 football players, and, and I know he was considered the doctor in the athletic department, so I don't know if he did basketball players or, 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 or hockey players. I know he did football players for sure, but think about that. 110 players every single year got rectal exams for however he was there, 10, 15 years, and no one said a word. And now it's coming up, so yeah, apparently back then maybe it was white, maybe it was wrong, but now with the woke generation, they're going after Dr. Anderson, who probably did do a lot of these things that were illegal, but to go after Bo Schembecker, like I said, is just is not right at all. Mm. They, yeah, he did do basketball players and other people outside of football, So, because I know some of those guys are part of the lawsuit, and, the, and they've talked about that too maybe private with people so it wasn't just football it was it was let me say this about the university too let me say this about the university they have they have the smoking gun email where there were some complaints about dr anderson when he worked for the university when he wasn't in the athletic department instead of them really looking into it or firing him they transfer him to the athletic department which looking back is pretty amazing that they did that oh. so that you know that just shows there is a smoking gun they knew about it back then, but they didn't do anything. I don't think Bo knew or thought it was sexual assault. So, you know, I, I would exonerate him, but I wouldn't exonerate the university because there are emails that show smoking gun that they basically kind of knew that there were complaints against him. What those complaints were, I don't know because the emails don't show that. Well, you know, um, I, I think I know your answer, but there's uh, some thought of taking... Um, the Schimbeckler statue down, uh, naming the football building, something else besides Schimbeckler Hall. Are you against that? Should everything bow related remain on the university and in the athletic department? Yeah, see, the problem is people only hear bits and pieces of a story. They don't really know the whole story. I'm hoping when they know the whole story about Bo, they won't do that. No, of, of course I'm against taking down the statue and renaming the building. I mean, if they take down the statue, I'd like to buy the property across the street and put a statue on his front lawn, to be honest with you. I get a little bit emotional when I talk about Bo, but, the, you know, he's just getting railroaded, and it's sad, and, and I'm definitely against everything that you said right there. We need to leave it alone. We need to, we need to do something maybe against the university or against Dr. Anderson, but not against Bo Schembechler. Andy Canavino kindly joining us here. Um, that was that was your coach, and, and you're more than welcome to get emotional. What what would you like people to know about Bo, the Bo that you knew? Because you know there was the Bo on the outside and the gruff type of guy. How would you describe Bo Schembechler to people, Andy? Well, the one thing I want to say is 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 Bo loved Michigan, loved the team, do anything for the team, for this for the athletes, for the university. The thing is with Bo, he did fly off the hook sometimes prematurely. So if Bo would have found out anything about this kind of stuff, he would have went crazy. Now, did someone go and tell him I had a rectal exam? Yes, they might have. Bo, looking back, would have said, okay, what's the problem? You got a rectal exam. I mean, if he thought it was sexual assault or even something that shouldn't have been done, he would have immediately took care of it. He took pro care of problems immediately. There's a quick story about me in 1980 when I had said some things when we were one and two that Bo didn't like. He immediately called me into his office, immediately. The next morning, I was in his office at 9 a.m., and he was yelling at me, screaming at me, telling me things. So Bo took care of problems immediately, and if he thought there was a problem, he would have definitely taken care of it. But Can I ask you one other question or say one other thing? Yeah. Why would Bo, if he thought there was sexual assault going on, hide it? It doesn't even make sense. If he thought there was something really going on with his athletes being sexually abused, why wouldn't he say something? It doesn't even make sense, does it? Well, I, I can uh, give you a reason why. Bo was also protective of that Block M. He was also very protective of that football team and, and the, the whole organization. So there is a possibility that he didn't want sexual assault to, to come out or 
some type of homophobic uh, type activity being associated with Michigan football because he was maybe fearful that it could really hurt the brand. Well, that would be the only reason that would be I could true, think of. Because Bo was very uh, uh, into the, the M brand in Michigan and, and the players, you're right. But like I said, I just believe if Bo knew anything about that. The other thing is Dr. Anderson had no, Bo had no allegiance to Dr. Anderson. Dr. Anderson came in, what, 69 or 70. Bo had just gotten the job. So I don't think he would have any allegiance to, to caring about Dr. Anderson. He did care about the brand. You're right about that. But I still don't think he would, I still think he would have done something if he, if he thought there was a problem. That's interesting because that's one of the things that I've read is, is somehow people have made it out to be that was Bo's guy and that, that was Bo's doctor. That really wasn't the case, Andy? No. No, not at all. Don't take us the wrong way. But when I was at the Rose Bowl, my freshman year, we had a trainer named Lindsey McLean. There was a problem with one of the injured players not practicing. Now, I, I don't like to tell this story much, but I, I, I will. Bo actually pushed down our trainer. He was wrong. Shouldn't have done it. The point is, Bo had no allegiance to anyone but his players in winning. He could care less about Dr. Anderson, about Dr. O'Connor, about the trainer. He just wanted the best people available for his players. So, I, you know, I don't believe at all that he would protect or care about Dr. Anderson at all. Mm, good. Terry, anything else? Uh, Andy, we appreciate you uh, taking the time, and this is uh... – uh, something to think about because I think a lot of people my generation, I, I thought back as you were talking about it, if I was a 19-year-old kid and that happened to me, I wouldn't have thought twice about it. I That's that's how I grew up. Right, because there's, I wouldn't have there's, thought twice there's about adults it. making the decision, and this and this is my first experience. Yep. This is just the way stuff is supposed to be. Yeah. Interesting. Can I say one last thing? You of know, the, you the, Michigan State, the Michigan State female gymnastics who got sexually abused, um, they, they were penetrated vaginally. At the time, think about this. They thought it was normal, which is crazy to, to, to think back. So it happens. You, you trust the doctor. You trust the superior. You're 20, 19 years old, 18 years old, and you just put trust and faith in a doctor. And sadly, it was misplaced. It was abused. But we have to move on and blame the right person, which is Dr. Anderson. Mm. Andy, what's, before we let you go, what's going on in your life right now? Uh, again, our guest, Andy Canavino, longtime Michigan fans will remember this guy, captain, Rose Bowl champion, Big Ten champion. What's going on in your life now, Andy? Uh, I'm from Cleveland. I still live in Cleveland, Ohio. They won't let me leave. Uh, I own a small business. I own a small business. A uh, couple kids, golf a lot, go to Florida in the winter. So got a good life. Can't complain. Everything's great. Have season tickets to Michigan. Go to a few games every year. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know, being in Ohio, my dad went to Ohio State, played for Woody Hayes. We need to beat this Ohio State Buckeyes. Oh, my gosh. I thought Jimmy was the answer. I I'm very loyal to Jimmy, but, you know, I'm starting to lose my patience. We got to do something. We got we got to win a game so we can get them back to calling it a, a, a rivalry. Yeah, outstanding stuff. Andy, really appreciate your time. Continued Thanks success to you and your family and your business. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Good luck to you guys. All right. All right. Take it easy. Andy Canavino uh, kindly joining us.